You don't need to speak because, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the speaker has to speak loud enough where people can hear him. Therefore, faith can come as they hear. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, I thank you now that the word of God will have free course in our hearts. And I thank you that we are not people that just listen, but we are people that are doers of the word. For we know that the man and the woman that's a doer of the word will be blessed. So, Lord, that's why we're blessed 24-7, because we are a doer of the word and we speak what we believe. And I thank you for that right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first scripture will be 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. I want to start out with that one this morning. I hope I got that right. Four thirteen. That's it. This is a, a very important scripture. I keep uh, bringing it up before for you. Sometimes you may, some people may catch on real quick, and they may say, "Well, Bob, you 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 said that last Sunday." In fact, I think you said that Sunday before last. Yeah, and I'm saying it this morning too, because some folks ain't heard me yet. See. And if you don't hear me, then you ain't got no faith. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So I'll be holding in front of us certain scriptures that are what I call musts. It's good to know the whole Bible, study the whole Bible. But I'm telling you, there's certain verses, certain principles in the word of God for our daily living. If we're going to be victorious Christians, we'll have to learn and know. For example, knowing this, that we have eternal life. These things have been written. Why have they been written? That we might know. Everybody say, no. no. Do you know that God loves you? Do you know that you have eternal life right now? And if you have eternal life, you will never die. You will live forever. So we don't have to worry about death. Death has been conquered by the Lord Jesus Christ. So we say what we believe. Look what it says. Yet we have the same spirit of faith. We see there that faith is a, a spirit, spirit of faith, as he had. Remember, we looked it up and found out that he is uh, King David, who wrote. King Ray, uh, David wrote a lot of things in the Bible and the Old Testament. We see that. I have believed. David says, I have believed, and therefore have I spoken. We too believe, and therefore we speak. So we speak that we're more than conquerors. We speak that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We speak that I am the righteousness of God in Christ. We speak that we are children of God. We speak we are a priesthood. Amen. Have you noticed how I'm punctuating it? That's what you call driving it in. See, right past the devil's in where we could just get right in your heart. And I believe that God loves me. I believe that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Somebody say, I believe. I, believe. I, have, I have eternal life eternal. right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. One day you're going to rejoice when you shed this old body. Amen. Didn't get much amen on that one, did I? Amen. Maybe I better change it then. <laughs> Don't want to leave right now, but one day we're going to rejoice because this old body that you're living in will give you a lot of problems after a while. But you know what? I'm going to reverse that. I believe I am not going to have those type of problems that when I do go, I'll just close my eyes and fall asleep. And I'm with Jesus Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Some of you are not even smiling. That guy up there must be crazy. No, I'm, I'm preaching what I believe. Of course, everybody's heard the joke about the young man being water baptized. Preaching put him under Brought him up. And the preacher says, son, do you believe? And the young man said, yes, sir, I believe. 
And the preacher says, I don't believe that you believe enough. Put him back under, held him a little longer this time. In fact, he held him a whole minute. Brought him back up. He was a coughing and a spitting down water. <coughs> I mean, and the preacher says, you believe? I said, yes, sir, I believe. The preacher says, I don't believe you believe enough. Put him back under, held him a little longer this time. Boy, when he come up out of the water, he was turning blue, spitting water. I mean, everything. And the preacher said, do you believe? And the guy says, yes, I believe. And the, and the pastor said, well, what do you believe? And the young fellow says, I believe you're trying to drown me. That's what I believe. <laughs> So we want to believe the right thing. We want to believe the word of God. We want to believe the promises of God. Hallelujah. All right. So. Everybody say. I believe. I speak. What I believe. Now here's the thing about the promises of God. When you're in the difficulty. That's when you moan and groan and spit cotton. That's when you got to speak what you believe. How many's listening to me? That's a hard thing, isn't it? You know what I mean? When you're in the difficult and you don't see the answer, you don't see the answer, and yet you stand and say, I believe that God's going to cause good to come out of this. And then begin to praise the Lord yeah. for it. Now, I want you to turn, if you will, to Romans 4. I got my new Bible, so it takes a little time to get these pages all loosened up. <clears throat> let's say 4. Let's start with 17. Romans 4, 17, to get the, the full gist of this. As it is written. Got to find out, read the Bible to find out what was written. I have made you the father of many nations. Now, who is speaking here? God, the father, is speaking to Abraham. He was appointed our father in the sight of God. That is, Abraham was appointed our father, the Jewish father, as our God. He's also our father, too. And you put your faith in Christ, then Abraham becomes our father, too. That's in Galatians. In the sight of God, in whom he believed. Excuse me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, that's one on the house. <clears throat> Who, whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and speaks of the non-existent things that he has foretold and promised as if they already exist. Amen. Now you need to meditate on that a while. Everybody raise their hand when you get it. I'm going to sit here and take a nap. <clears throat> It don't exist yet. But I say that I am more than a conqueror. You may be in a situation that you don't feel like you are a conqueror, and yet you speak what you believe, not what you feel. See, the feeling rim goes up and down. Right, right. See, up and down. We all know that. But listen, when you feel bad, you're still saved. Are you saved? Yeah. Are you saved only when you feel good? Are you, are you saved when you feel bad? Yeah. Uh, are, are you saved when you got a headache? Yeah. Uh, are you saved when you ain't got enough money to pay that debt? Uh, uh, are you saved when everybody's talking about you? Are you saved by the grace of God? Yes. Through faith, regardless of what you see, regardless of what you don't see, it is the word of God that we put our faith in. It is the promises of God. What God has spoken is what we believe. Yeah. You notice how I punctuate that? Do you want me to do that again? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, I mean this thing. I mean to 
drive it home because I tell you what, we believing for something around here. We believing for revival. Yes, we are. And we believe that God is going to use us in some way to bring that revival. Yes. Because see, all things are possible with God. Amen. So we believe that God is on the throne. We believe that God is real. Now look, look at the next verse. Go to the next verse. All right, now, remember, you want to put that down. It doesn't exist yet. That couple over there is going to get married. I believe, even though they're not even married yet, that they're going to get married. And I don't even see it yet. But I know some holding hands, that tells me something. I see the way he looks at her. That's the way I used to look at Susan. (laughs) <laughs> Some of you don't understand that, you know, but you know. See, I believe the promises of God. Not some myth, not what somebody is saying out there. We believe the promises of God. For all the promises of God are yea and amen in Christ, even though I don't see it at the moment. Even though I'm not experiencing it for the moment. I believe that I have it. It's mine. Now notice Abraham. Verse 18. For Abraham, human reason for hope being gone. All right. In all of his human reasoning, I can see no hope in this thing. I have no hope as I reason that how can this happen? He has no hope. But hoped in faith. Everybody say hope. Hope. In faith. Everybody look at me. I'm the best looking guy in here, so you all look at me. I mean, there's a few exceptions, you know, Willie back there and Floyd over there and Charles. And listen, hope, hope, hope being gone, all hope's gone. Ain't no more hope, it's all gone. I don't have no more hope, it's all gone. But he hoped in faith. Everybody say hope, hope. in faith. Somebody say, are you hoping? You say, yeah, I'm hoping in faith faith. All my reasoning facilities that blew their cork. But I believe, I hope in faith that he should become the father. He, Abraham believed and hoped in faith that he would become the father of many nations. I mean, think about that. Many na- How big a nation is? I'm going to be the father of all those nations? How can that be? With man? Impossible. Now, how many understand that, that when people accept Christ as their Savior in all those nations, they become a child of who? Abraham. Everybody understand that? I don't have time to go through all the scriptures, but it's in Galatians. Okay, I want you to understand that. So, it should become the father of many nations. As he had been promised, as he had been promised. Who promised him that? See, sometimes when we pray, we don't pray the promise. We praise what we think. So you have to get into the word of God and find the promise that will suit your situation. And then begin to pray the promise and begin to believe in the promise, which is God's word. How many understand what I'm saying? Not many of you, but just stick around. Maybe you will. (sighs) You got to find the promise. One promise that I hold on to quite a bit is in, in Romans eight twenty eight. How many know that one? Yeah. God will cause good. God will cause good to come out of this thing because I'm trusting. I love him. All right. So here we go. So he hoped in faith that he should become the father of many nations. And we realize that. Because the seed came down through Abraham and uh, right on down to David and right on down to uh, Joseph and Mary. As he had been promised, so God promised him that he would be the father of many nations. All right? Can you imagine way over there in the desert? (laughs) I mean, 
It's an impossible situation. Who am I? I'm just Abraham. I'm over here and I wear, I'm married to a wife and she's 90 years old. And Let's look the other way. And I'm 100. Things begin to sort of fade away when you get hungry. About, hungry, did I say hungry? <laughs> when you get 100. <laughs> Someone said, well, I don't have that problem no more. I know you're 100 years old. <laughs> uh, that's what they accused me of. I said, no, I conquered that years ago at your age, by the way. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So numberless shall your descendants be. That's what God told Abraham. Now, I just want to be honest. That doesn't uh, excite me too much. To, to, to be a father of all those folks. <laughs> Does that excite anybody in here? <laughs> Doesn't excite me a bit. So don't worry about that, you know. But what does excite you? What has God promised you? As you get into the word of God and see what your inheritance is in Christ that God has promised us. For example, he's promised us eternal life. He's promised us a home in heaven. He's promised us, if we accept Christ, he will forgive us of all of our sins. The best deal in the world that, that a person uh, can come into and understand that everything is canceled out. When he be, and when he becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new creation. He, no, you're not a changed man. You are a new creation, one that never existed before. I'm talking about your spirit man now. Yeah, you got the same body, same blue eyes, same gray hair, same no hair. But you are a brand new creation in Christ. Can I hear one amen? Amen. Boy, you're really encouraging your pastor this morning. <laughs> Let's go to the next verse now. I'm hidden somewhere now here. He did not weaken in faith. He did not weaken in faith when he considered the utter impotent of his own body. I mean, look at the situation. He's 100 years old. No way, Jose. Forget it. It can't be done. But his faith was not in himself. Now, I'm going to tell you something. When you look at yourself, no way. You ain't going to conquer the world of flesh and the devil in your own power. No. So you might as well quit looking at your own self and take hold of the promises of God, which are many in the scriptures. Lay hold of the promises of God. Yes. Believe what God has said in his word. Even though I don't feel like I'm more than a conqueror, God says I am more than a conqueror. I believe, I believe, and I speak what I believe. I am more than a conqueror. Through Christ Jesus, my Lord. Hallelujah. Now, some of you are not even, that's not even jarring you. Your mind is on hamburgers or hot dogs or lunch. You're looking at the funny book somewhere. But when you can understand what I am saying, you will be deliberated. Yeah. I remember when I was coming into these truths. And I say, I'm dead indeed under sin. But I'm alive unto God through Christ Jesus, my Lord. And that thing inside of me would stir up. You know, boy, if I could just give you one of them, you know what I mean? You hear what he said about me? i like to plant him on that mountain over there. How many understand what I'm talking about? But that, see, that's the time. When you have that feeling, when you have that feeling of discouragement, when you have that feeling of, of, of hopelessness, when you have that feeling that you are like nothing, that's when you grab hold of the promises of God and you say, Lord, you said I'm a child of God. You said my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You say and you speak what you believe. You quit speaking what you feel, but you speak what you believe. Do you believe God's word? That's the question. Maybe that's the problem with a lot of people. They don't really believe. What God has spoken. The God that cannot lie. Come on church. Don't shout me down. I believe. What God says in his word. 
I believe that the love of God has been shed in my heart by the Holy Ghost. God has been giving me uh, just supernatural revelation about the love of God. A lot of times we do things because the love of God is not manifesting itself. We don't understand how powerful the love of God is. When you love somebody, you don't treat them bad. See, now I know all about the human nature. I know all about the old fallen nature. But I'm saying to you, when love takes over in your life, when love is prominent, when love is the primary thing that it moves you and excites you, and that's just the way it works. You don't want to talk about people. You don't want to say bad things about people. You don't even want to say any more bad things about yourself. I think I need to milk that just a little bit. <laughs> because all you're doing is agreeing with the devil. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Preach. And it, who said that? <laughs> Thank you, Rose. Believe, believe it will. Believe it will. Believe it will. You got to know who you are in Christ. You're not an old sinner no more. You're a child of the living God. You are a part of the priesthood. You are God's child, saved by the grace of God through your faith in what God has told you. Oh, that's exciting to me. Now, Bob, do you have to yell? No, I don't have to yell, but I'll tell you one thing. I'm speaking truth. Of course, now I can talk soft. But those that like it soft, I can talk soft. You know, God loves you. <laughs> yeah, he loves you. He ain't going to change huh? Louder. Huh? Why? Why? Louder. Why? What's wrong? You ain't got ears. <laughs> but I'd rather speak where people can hear me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I want to see the chandeliers tremble a little bit when I speak. Because I'm speaking what I believe. I'm speaking what the word of the Lord says. I'm speaking thus saith the Lord. Not what Bob Tilton believes. Not what I say. But I believe what God says in his word. Isn't that better than... Look at that. Oh my goodness. He was about 100 years old. Or when he considered the, the, the barrenness of Sarah's dead wound. I'm going to stay out of trouble here. We'll move on from there. I, I could milk that, but it'd be pretty good, but I ain't. Go to the next verse. Notice, no unbelief or distrust made him waver, doubtly questions, doubtingly questions concerning the prom notice, the promise of God. Someone said, well, you know, God ain't answering my prayer. I said, do you pray the promises of God? Or are you just praying something off your head of what you feel like, uh, the, right. you know, you think right. I need this and I think I need that and... Find out what the promises of God in that situation is. Amen. And then begin to believe in the promises that God has spoken. Look what it says. But he grew. Now this is very important. I'm, I'm going to milk this a little bit. But he grew strong and was empowered by faith. As he gave praise and glory to God. Now catch that. Catch that. Don't let it escape your mind and your eyes. Let's put it this way. As he gave praise and glory to God, he grew strong and was empowered by faith. I will say that again. Because if you, if, if you understand what I'm talking about, I might have you to come up here and then tell me. Okay. How did he grow strong? How was he empowered? By faith. By faith. But he gave praise and glory to God before, what he, before it happened. Yeah. Sarah wasn't pregnant yet. But he gave praise and glory to God. And as he did that, 
he grew strong in faith. Oh, this is so important. What are you promised? What are you believing for? You don't have it yet. But what you do is you begin to praise God for it before you get it. God counts those things that be not as though they are. So I don't have it yet, but I praise God like I got it. Are you out there? That's faith. That's faith. Oh, catch that scripture. Mark that in your Bible. Mark it on the wall. Turn to Hebrews 11, 1. I am bringing my new Bible in. And these pages seem to be knitted together. (laughs) There we go. All right. Everybody look at the board. Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see. And that conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. You don't have it, but you're believing for it, and you don't waver in your faith, and you praise God before you get it, and your faith becomes stronger and stronger. Go back to that scripture again in Romans 4, verse 20. When you read in the Old Testament, in the book of Psalms, you find out one of the biggest problems not only in the Old Testament, but also in the New Testament. How many of you know that Jesus Christ did not, could not do many miracles in his own hometown because of what? Unbelief. Unbelief. So here we are many times struggling for faith, and we need to speak against that spirit of unbelief in our lives and do a little spiritual warfare and command that unbelief to go. Because see, these spirits will attach onto you and you don't know it. And you think it might be really you and it's nothing but a spirit, an evil spirit that is attached onto your mind and you keep saying what he wants you to say. So take authority over spirit of unbelief, spirit of doubt. Take authority over it. Your weapons are mighty through God till they tear down a stronghold. You tear down that stronghold in your mind. And you believe God's promise, and man, God is not a man that he should lie. Abraham didn't come into that promise, but he began to grow stronger and stronger as he praised and gave God the glory. All right? Our sister's looking for a job back there, she's a teacher. Father, I don't have a job, but uh, I thank you that you told me in in your word that I should work. And if I don't work, that I shouldn't eat. But I want to work. I don't want to thank you, Father, for that job. And I look at her and and I say, well, you ain't got it yet. Yes, but I tell you what, my faith is getting stronger as I praise and I give him glory for what I don't see. Hallelujah. I give him praise what I'm hoping for. Once I get the job, I don't have to hope for it no more. I got it. Now, Bob, you, you, you know, you, listen. Do I look like I'm 21? No. Who said 22? You say that, Willie? <laughs> what I preach, I have walked through for years and years. I had to stand for three, three years in believing for this property. Three years I had to believe God and I didn't waver. Didn't even have the money to pay for it if it did come into existence at that moment. 
So I waited three years, didn't waver. I believe we had certain people. Frank was with me. He stood with me. People left. Like, you didn't hear from God. I know I did. We're going to get some property and we're going to build a building on it. See, all this just didn't happen like, oh, 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 no, no. I heard from God. I obeyed God three years. Let me tell you, when you have to stand for three years and when everybody's looking at you and say, did you really hear from God? Yep. I really heard from God. Now, I ain't telling you all the difficulties and all don't have to. I'm just simply say, saying I know I've walked this thing out in my life. And God is always faithful. When you hear from God, if he said something, you can bank on it. Absolutely, you can bank on it. So let's get out of all this unbelief and all this doubt. Take authority over those things. Come on, take authority. God's given you power over all the powers of the enemy. Don't give in every time you feel a little weak. No, let the weak say they are strong. And say what you believe. I'll be 84 come March, March 11th. Mark it down. Don't need any particular thing, but I will take money. That way I can always go to Hardy's to get a Hardy burger. It's so exciting to see God work. We had a miracle. We had a miracle this uh, uh, this Monday, Monday morning, there's uh, Spencer, he's out there with, with, the, with the Mercury and he's hooking the trailer up. And the thing, uh, the, the car gets stuck in park. Well, you know, you hit the brake and you just bring it down and put it in gear and you go, right? It wouldn't come out of park. So I've seen him out there praising God. <laughs> I said, I better get out there now. That boy, he gonna get into trouble. <laughs> So I went out there and he, he did everything he could. We looked at, did, looked at this, looked at that, put the hood up, did everything we know to do. He got back in the car. And he's going to tell you everything we did. But the, I, I, now he had to go to work. He had a job that people were expecting him to be there. Uh, I, and I go back and I tell Susan what the situation is. She starts praying. And I go back out there and he's in there. And, and, and so I said, get out of there. Let me do some of that. Make a long story short, he went around the other side. He's a, oh. of course, the man of faith. <coughs> it was God. Let me tell you something. I went in there. And I grabbed hold of the, the lever. Boop. <laughs> Did you hear that? Boop. It went just boop. Come right out of park. Boop. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> boop, boop. I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Especially out there. Like Charles over there. Miracle, wasn't it a miracle? It was a miracle. Man, we, I mean, I was, he's strong. I mean, we'd almost tear that transmission out of the car. We were going to, boop, 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 boop. Give me a boop up there, Frank. Let me hear it. Very good, very good. <laughs> I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I believe in the God of miracles. Abraham, you're going to be the father of many nations. He's a hundred years old. Looked at Sarah. No way, Lord. No, he didn't waver. He believed God's what? Promise. Everybody say God's promise. Get the promise in your situation. Find out what the promise is. The Bible has, I forgot how many, 800 some promises, uh, Old Testament and New Testament. Find the promise. Now, if you're weak, what are you going to say? Oh, I'm so weak. I tell you, I can hardly smile. I know how that is. I've been, I've been caught into that. And Susan would get after me. What does the Bible say? I believe that I'm strong. 
I can do all things through Christ. Susan and me remind each other, and when we see we step out from the promises of God, she's on my case like this. And after you get hit with that frying pan about two times, you learn to straighten up. I tell you, I believe I'm strong. I, I just love the sound it makes. Oh, that's music to my ears. How many love me today? Yeah, I'm preaching truth, but I'm making you smile just a little bit. Remind each other, because it's so easy to fall in that old trap. I'm just a, just a worm in the cabbage patch. No, you're not. You are a child of the king. You're a child of Abraham. You are more than a conqueror. Fully justified, sanctified, set apart for God. Now let's read that again. No unbelief or distrust made him waver, doubtingly, doubtingly questions concerning the promise of God, concerning the promise of God, concerning the promise of God. Find out what the promise of God tells you, and that's what you hold on to. You hold on to the promise of God. You believe what God says. You speak what you believe. I believe in the promise. But he grew, look, strong and was empowered by faith. As he gave praise and glory to God. So as he gave praise and glory to God, what happened to him? He grew what? Strong and was empowered by faith. How many got it? How many ain't got it? How many got it? How many ain't got it? All right, more's got it than ain't. The God is win. So, the next time you're in a situation, what are you going to do? Believe in God's promises. Find out what God's promises, and there's a lot of them in the Bible. Lay a hold of it. Receive it by faith. And speak it. Amen. Speak what you believe. I believe that God is for me and with me. I believe this. If God is for me, who can be against me? And if God is for me, who do I care is against me? That's their problem. But you've got to understand God is for you. God is for me. God is for us. Now, I want to turn to 2 Timothy 1.10. 2 Timothy 1.10. Now, how many in here believe that you will never die? Let's see your hands. Okay. How many in here believe you will die? One. No, you won't. You won't die. Your body, your body will. <laughs> your body will. This body will fade out. It will just eventually flake out. Notice the scripture. It is that purpose and grace which he now has made known. Now he's made it known to us and has fully disclosed and made real to us. See, these truths must be made real to us by the Spirit of God. Disclosed and made real to us through the appearing of our, our Savior Christ Jesus. Notice this. Who annulled death. And made it of no effect. So, Christ dealt with death. He annulled it. We will never experience it. Oh, these bodies will because they're not redeemed yet. But yet one day we'll have a brand new body just like his. All right, look what it says. And made it of no effect and brought life and immortality, immune, in, in, immunity from eternal death. Immu we're immune to it. To light through the gospel. 
Now, there's still a lot of people fear death. That, that's a natural part of, of man. But as you realize that Christ conquered death for us. And so if you sense fear in your life that maybe you're going to die, you say, no, I'm not going to die. Why? Because Christ annulled it, conquered it, and you will never die. Now notice this scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him. How many in here believes in him? Amen. Believes in him shall not die but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him. What? Should not perish or die, but have everlasting life. Amen. So in that one promise right there, we believe and we have eternal life and we will never die. So there should not be no fear. Here's another scripture we want to turn to uh, is in Hebrews 2.14. 2.14. Know what it says. Since therefore these his children, that's us, share in flesh and blood in the physical nature of human beings, he himself in a similar manner partook of the same nature. Of course, we know he had not the sin, he, he did not have the sin nature that we have. That by going through death, by going through death, who did, who did he go through death for? Us. His death was our death. Don't fall asleep on me. Get it. His death, he died in our place. That by going through death, he might bring to naught and make of no effect him who had the power of death, that is, the devil. So Satan is defeated by Jesus Christ. And Christ experienced our death for us. Now the old man, we know that, the Bible talks about the old nature, has died with Christ. Thank goodness for that. But we have been risen to walk in the newness of life. And so you don't have to worry about death. Now suppose all of a sudden a fear of death comes upon you. What are you going to do? Just absorb it? No, you're going to speak what you believe. And what do you believe? That death was conquered by the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary. Amen. See, the world's missing out on all these wonderful promises. They don't know what a wonderful, tremendous salvation that God has provided for everybody. It is God's will that no man perish, but that all should come to repentance. Christ took care of everything at Calvary. But you've got to get this old brain renewed up there and remember that. The Bible says something like, absent from the body. Present with the Lord. Right, present with the Lord. So when this body quits breathing, your spirit comes out of your body, and there you are in the presence of your Lord. Now that is awesome. Amen. And I speak what I believe. And I tell people what I believe. Because I meet a lot of folks that don't understand that Christ conquered death. Yes. Death. And you read over in Hebrews, uh, not Hebrews, but uh, Revelation, that death shall be no more. Death has always plagued man. But it don't have to plague us because we ain't going to die. We're just going to be absent from these bodies and present with the Lord when these bodies quit breathing. I've been uh, at the deathbed of uh, many people in my day. I remember my uncle. I won him to the Lord almost on the deathbed. And we was watching him breathing. Just like that. He just quit breathing. Didn't holler, didn't hoot, didn't make no noise, nothing, just quit breathing. And I sense about 
probably about three or four seconds after he quit breathing, I could tell his spirit left his body. My spirit, I could discern that. It was a tremendous experience. He went to be with the Lord. Absent from that body, laid out on that bed, quit breathing. His spirit went to be with the Lord. Now that's a good deal. That, everybody raise your hand and say, that's a good deal. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good deal. A good deal. The Bible says that the believers overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they love not their life unto death. God will work in all of our lives that we won't love this life here. Because that's where a lot of people have fears. They ain't going to make it. I'm scared. I remember when I was a young boy and, and I was about 18 years old and I thought maybe I was going to die before I got married. And, and I got married and then I died. <laughs> <clears throat> oh yeah, you will. <laughs> you, you will. If you want that marriage to last, you, you, you better just let that old man die out. They love not their life unto death. That means all fear of death was gone. Most people fear it. But you see, Jesus conquered death for you and for me. And we will never see the grave. Never see the grave. Never see the grave. The people out there in this cemetery, they ain't out there. That's just their body. They were the Lord. My dad, my dad and mom, they, they ain't in that grave over there. Across the Ashley over there, no. They were the Lord. Now, their body's there. These bodies can't live in heaven. They can hardly live down here sometimes. <laughs> see, what a wonderful gospel we have. What a wonderful salvation we have. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I'm going to leave you with this. But we're going to close. Turn to John 4, 1, 6. St. John 14. St. John, there we go. No, that ain't it. John, St. John 14, 1. It's coming up. All right, here's the conclusion of my message today. Do not let your hearts be troubled, distressed, agitated. You believe and heave to and trust in and rely on God. Believe and heave to and trust in and rely also on me. That's Jesus speaking. Next verse. Now here's the promise of God. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places, homes. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I am going away to prepare a place for you. Now let's stop and think for a moment. Here we are down here struggling and trying to make a living and make a dollar and pay the bills and raise some kids. And, and God, our Lord and Savior, went to heaven. And he's preparing a home up there. You know, God, you don't catch, you don't catch God short. You know, not to have a house to live in is not very much fun, is it? Uh, aren't you glad you got a house that you can put your shoes under the bed or in the closet and you got air conditioning and all the things in your house that's very comfortable? Can you imagine how comfortable the house that the Lord is preparing for us? Yeah. Now we know just how big this house is. The New, the new Jerusalem. 1,400 miles wide, 1,400 miles high. It's a cube. It's not a pyramid, but it's a cube. A lot of houses. 
Now, I don't know what floor you're going to be on, but when I get there, I want to know where I come up and see you. <laughs> Won't have to I, I ride the elevator. I'll just see myself, find out what room you are, and I'm there. Hey, good to see you there, Spencer. What you got in the refrigerator, son? <laughs> Some of what grandma's cake. I'll take a slice of that. Thank you. Some milk with it too. <laughs> Folks, let me tell you, what God has planned for us is awesome. Yeah. We can't even describe it. Now, it's so wonderful. God is a giving God. God is a loving God. God is a gracious God. You will have the best of everything. Down here we have to work hard for it. No, notice what it says. No, it says. If it were not, I, for I am going a way to prepare a place for you. Isn't Jesus wonderful? He, he's prepared salvation for us. Now he's prepared a house for us. A home. I like my home. Take my shoes off. Ain't nobody around. Take my shirt off. I'll stop there. But you can be comfortable. You know what I mean? I got one of them chairs you flip up like that and you put your legs up like that, you know. And I think about, boy, the Lord has provided this for me. And I live in a double wide mobile home over there and it's like a castle to me and Susan. Now, we used to have a big brick home, and we, we sold that to move over here to do God's work. But we don't have anything to worry about it. Go to the next verse. So God is preparing a place for us. And when, if I go and make ready a place for you, and he's done that, I will come back again and will take you to myself that where I am you may be also. How many of you know you want to be with those you love? God is so gracious. He loves us so deeply. He wants us to be with him. That's why people get married. They love one another. They want to spend 24-7 together. And I, I, I'm going to say something here's ugly. <laughs> I, I don't know if I should say that. Sometimes they ruin it by their mouths. Oh, they, 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 they say that. Uh, play like I didn't say that. We, we got some tape up there if you want to take some of it home. Is that not true? We ruin things by what we say. But we got to learn to say what we believe. And we believe we're going to get married. We believe we're going to get married to Jesus. We are the bride. He's the bridegroom. He's going to prepare a place for us. And he's coming back for us. That where he is, we shall also be. Amen. Throughout eternities of eternities. Hallelujah. Folks, you need to understand you're only down here but just a little while. Just a passing hour. Oh, I know if you're 18 and 19, you think you, oh boy, you know, life is so long. All of a sudden, boop, you'll be 80 years old. Just like that. Some of you getting old and you don't know it. But it'll die. See, everything down here is temporal. That house you got is temporal, yeah. temporary. That nice car you drive, temporary. That body you live in right now, temporary. Not trying to discourage you, but I'm just telling you, it's temporary. That's what the Bible says. But we don't look at the things that we see, for we look at the things we don't see. For the things that we see are temporal, but the things that we do not see are eternal. But we see it by faith, and we speak what we believe. Jesus has got, went to heaven, and he's preparing a place for every one of us. I don't know what floor you're going to be on. I don't know what floor I'm going to be on. But as long as I'm somewhere in that building, I'll to shout to joy. Hallelujah. I know that don't excite many people today, but as you get older, it'll excite you. You'll get happy with it. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to read that again. And when, if I go and make... 
and make ready a place for you, I will come back again. Now that's a promise. That's a promise he's coming back. That's a promise he's coming back. And why is he coming back? He's coming back for his bride. Amen. That's you and me. And I will come back again, and I will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And what are we talking about? We're talking about heaven. Yeah. We're talking about going to heaven. We're talking about going to heaven to that place that he's making, uh, making for us. Well, let's hit those next two things. Verse 4, and then we'll quit. I can tell you some of you are getting hungry. And to the place where I am going, you know the way. How many in here know the way? Amen. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. There is salvation only in Christ Jesus. Only through Him can we be saved. When we receive Him as our Lord and Savior... He's got a room for us in heaven. He's prepared it for us. I think my room is all ready. It has to be because I'm getting older. <laughs> and I'll be needing that room pretty soon. I tell you what, as long as the glory of God is there, that'll be glory for me. Some people can't understand that you can just live 24-7 in the glory of God and don't do nothing. Just sucking in the glory of God. Just living in the glory of God. Just appreciating the glory of God. Just in His presence. 24-7. But there'll be things for us to do. Don't you worry. Yeah. He's got a planet with my name on it. He said, now, Bob, you go over there and take charge of that planet. And I'll be back after a while, and I want you to run it for me. That'll be right next to the planet that Willie's going to be on the next planet over. There's a vast universe out there. And God aims to fill it with his people. Not aliens, but with his people. Folks, this is a big thing. This ain't some little thing. We have got to understand what the Lord has done is awesome. It's mighty. And when you can see by faith what the Lord has done, glory to God is wonderful. We're not talking about Halloween. We're not talking about nothing like that. We're talking about the very presence of God, what God has prepared for his people. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. But he has revealed it unto us. How? By his spirit. And once you get that revelation by his spirit, life will have a different appearance for you. We're just passing through. We're on our way to the glory land. I'm going to check out my room. I don't know if it has television in it. Doesn't really matter. But I'll guarantee you if they do have it, there'll be something worth looking at. Well, down here they don't seem to have anything on that television that wants me to look at it anymore. But it's a glorious resurrected life eternal life as he is in the world so shall we be it's a glorious salvation it's a marvelous life to live with God it's awesome what the Lord has done and I'm going to speak what I believe I believe he loves you and I believe he loves me what more could you ask to get secure in that love. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that the love of God will manifest more in all of our lives, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation would rest upon us, that we might behold the King of kings and the Lord of lords, for what he has accomplished is marvelous, and he did it for us. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn to somebody.